Hey gang, Sally here. Hope you're having an amazing and fascinating day. I know I am. Sorry about the terrible lighting. It is actually daytime. In fact, it's only about 8.15 in the morning, but I'm camped in the trees and so it's pretty dark inside. Thus, I've turned on an overhead light. That's why we've got shadows. Sorry, is what it is. Today, I'm taking you back in time. We're still back in August. We are uh, August 25th in upstate New York, western upstate New York. We're visiting Corning and we're at the Corning Museum of Glass. This was an amazing tour and uh, you're just going to get a few snippets of it so that you can see a little bit of the glass. There's no way I could have recorded the entire thing. Um, the gal that did the tour was super cool. We were on tour for about 45 minutes and I thought I had a little bit more footage than I do. So this one's going to be a little bit short. We're going to go ahead and uh, run the intro and then jump right into it. As always, thanks so much for coming along. I really appreciate you watching my videos. So what is this? Obviously it's a sculpture. It's called Firm Green Tower, and we're just going to pan all the way up to the top here. Originally it was 11 feet, and now it's over 15. It's been disassembled, had stuff added to it, and reassembled. It's uh, pretty amazingly intricate, huh? Yeah, very cool. So if I'm looking at this big glass sculpture, where do you think I might be? Well, the door says it backwards because we're inside. It's the Corning Museum of Glass, and we're about to go on the tour. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna call you on the tour is this work over here called Alci Moderno by the Dilatori Brothers. <laughs> I wanted to highlight this piece because the museum is currently hosting an exhibition of a retrospective of their body of work. So if you find that this piece is interesting to you, perhaps later on, you might want to go into the center of the work. This is not the first iteration of this piece. The first version she made was about half the size, actually. And when she stepped back from her work, she wasn't happy with how large the piece was because she wasn't getting that perspective that she needed. So, a lot. Well, yes, there are. Anybody want to throw out a number? 326. How many? No. 326. There's more than 326. I was thinking. Yes, there's exactly 500 butterflies in the chandelier. We actually have one extra butterfly on the wall right behind you over there. And that's so that you can get a really close look at the electronics. Because the actual way every single piece of that glass tessellation was made was with the usage of a computer measuring and cutting with a water jet cutter. So every single piece of glass that we see in this work is exactly measured to be the very same. Because the goal of a tessellation is for one piece to be able to fit into itself no matter which way you put it. Do you need 
need to squeeze into the blue too? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think blue is the most favorite color. It certainly is for me. Need to be here. <laughs> but I did want to invite you to get to stand beneath the chandelier so that you can really get a picture for all of those vessels of glass present in the work. The pink color of the chandelier is the major draw of it to me. If you recall earlier, I mentioned that you need gold in order to get pink, but that is actually not the case with this chandelier over here. The husband and wife glass making pair behind this color recipe actually used the element erbium. Okay, we just completed the tour and we're gonna take a quick walk through now and just kind of look at some of the other stuff. And I do mean a quick walk through because we've been here a little over an hour and the tour was very, very cool. Our tour guide was great as you could see. Didn't record a whole lot of it because there were a lot of people there. But I want to show you some of the other stuff. Like, look at this. Called All in All, A-L-L, from 1971. Blown glass, wood table, clay metal paint, adhesive assembled. Pretty amazing. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is a huge timeline. From Okay, let's look at the piece. So, global cities. We've got the map of the world down here. Very cool. This one's called Thousand Hands. Can you see them all? No idea what this is called, but it's pretty cool looking. Let's go out to the end here where the name is. Forest glass. Viewed from a distance, this installation appears as three shimmering trees. Up close, small details such as birds, leaves, and mushrooms can be found among the reclaimed drinking glasses. I have to admit, I am often not good at looking beyond. I see birds on glasses and leaves. I wonder if that's what they mean. I was looking for objects within the shelves, but I don't see that. Okay. Look at this. Kaleidoscope. Oh, wow. I wonder if this, does this show up on film? Let's see. Okay, we got a fish with a ship. Which transforms to a person in a hammock. Eyeballs. My goodness. All right, guys, this is pretty amazing. Chinese dragon over here. Oh, wow. Man, I have no idea if this is going to show up or not, but it's pretty freaking cool. I 
I think you can see it. Wow. It's just amazing, isn't it? It is. This is called the Reconquest. And these are all by the Delatore brothers. They use interesting elements in all of their stuff. All right, we're gonna keep going because the Kitster has been home alone for over an hour and I don't want him to be completely freaked out. Okay, we went through there. We did not go down here yet. Excuse me. Sorry. No worries. Quite a few people here very popular location. This is probably my favorite, one of my favorite pieces. The kaleidoscope was super favorite. Some really interesting stuff made out of glass, guys. Look at that. It's like meat. It's all sausages. Very cool. Okay, we're gonna head back down out of this gallery. I wanna go up to the next level and take a look real quick up there. And then we'll run through the gift shop on our way out. How's that sound? And I apologize for the shakiness. I just assumed I wasn't going to be allowed to video, so I didn't bring my uh, Osmo Pocket 3, which I have become really fond of. Boy, I like that camera. Okay, good to know. All right, that's a down elevator. How do I get up there? Maybe there's two of them? Nope. Okay, I see stairs over here though. This place is huge. And kind of maze like. And of course, you know, bottles, glasses. Hearing about the history with, uh, I think his name is Donald Carter, who designed a lot of the uh, pieces produced by Steven Glass. It was pretty interesting as well. Look at this. Okay. Innovation and Hot Shop. Okay, so that was cool. 
they do uh, demonstrations and stuff. You can also make your own glass piece. No idea how much that might cost. But I also felt bad about taking too awful much time here. This is the largest size of glass that can be transported. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start down here at the bottom. And look all the way up to the top, way up there. It's 10 feet, 10 inches wide, weighs 1,930 pounds. Very cool. They do a glass breaking demo. Sorry, I think I just held it completely. Next one's at 1240 and it's 12 o'clock, so I guess I won't be seeing that. But you know, we've got tempered glass for windshields and um, bathtub doors and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And of course, I'm not really taking the time to learn anything. I just want to give you a flavor for what this is like. Oh, optics, of course. Low E glass for energy savings. Oh, look at this thing. What is this? And that. Okay, we've got glass walls on these ramps and I can see through them, so it's freaking me out a little bit. now fueling their furnaces by solar power. Interesting. Must take a lot. This is freaky. This is the inside of that big black capsule. Owen's Corning. Fabulous Owens bottle machine. That was definitely an innovation. Big innovation. Okay. On one of these and those, and, th and this is funny because I actually, when I lived in upstate New York, I belonged to a program with Corning where they would send me experimental cookware to test, and I had to report to them every week. We'd get a phone call. And periodically, I'd have to fill out forms. It was a lot of fun, and I got a lot of cool stuff. Some of which never made it to the market. A lot of which did. And I uh, never got injured by anything breaking or anything bad like that. So that's cool. That's very cool, actually. And the real point here is the different temperatures at which the glass is fired to achieve clear versus white. Okay. Oh, we got a flame working demo apparently going on right now. So, 
It's a lot like those other materials, it's just really, really hot. <laughs> so we can't touch it with the fingers. But um, otherwise, I'm, I'm thinking of the shaping process is being quite similar. So but I can't even get close enough to see, so we'll just move along. Okay, this is another water lens. Magnifying with my fingers. Very cool. <laughs> Whoa, that's freaky. That is really weird. Uh huh. Start here. Oh, wow. Well. Start at your height. Walk the dotted line to the mirror and see what. Oh my, I'm upside down, first of all. I'm gonna get really fat, fatter than I already am, aren't I? All right, let's, I just disappeared. Oh wow, that's like, whoa. Whoa. That's like totally, totally weird. Totally weird, guys. It's a fraction of a, a sphere. Focal point is set at the center. Yeah. Very cool. And this is the gift shop, guys. Good golly, Miss Molly. I'm not even going to go downstairs. Because there is absolutely nothing that I need. Or even one. I love the fact that I feel so complete with my life. Oh, they do have a cafe down there. But I just ate breakfast. So we're gonna get on back to Kit. And uh, that'll be our day here. That'll be our day here. High level watermark from June 23rd, 1972. That was before I lived here. I, oh, I forgot all about the big flood, which I can't really remember anything about offhand right now. I think I'm gonna check right now before we get back see what the temperature in the RV is because I can and I love being able to do that thanks Corning we're gonna see how kid is doing in just a moment but I want to point out when I got here there was one car up here in the front row I was the only RV and apparently I started a bad precedent because Here's one that just decided to park willy-nilly. There's a, whatever that is, Twilight Platinum, never heard of that. And then an Airstream back there who is appropriately parked in the appropriate location. So, I left the TV on for him. Let's see how he did. did knock my backrest pillow down. And this is what we've been playing. Hey, Kit, say hi to the people. Can you say hi to the people? Get off of there. Okay, sit, sit, sit. I think he's excited. It might've helped, but he wasn't barking, so that's good news. 